So we're here with Ooh Canada Magazine. I'm Eric Palmer representing. I'm here with Gifty and she's going to talk about her, her, her entrepreneurial spirit, what made her motivated. We're going to get all into it. Um, Gifty Abiel, how, where can we start? Where did you actually get the idea of opening up um, your, your own business? Um, I think it's something that has always been there. Um, it was just a matter of time. <laughs> and um, it starts way from when I was a kid. Um, as far as um, turning it into an, a, an actual business outside of the home, I didn't know when that would start, but it actually started here in Ottawa when I moved um, from Windsor, Ontario um, in 99. Mm -hmm. um, I first worked for um, Stitch It when I came here uh, for about seven years, and then it merged out into a partnership. Mm -hmm. And then after some time, I went solo. Mm -hmm. But when you ask me that question, it's such a long, um, tall question. <laughs> long so let's shorten it up. Um, when, so, did you, when did you realize that I had to open a business? Um, when I came to Ottawa, but it started also in Windsor um, when I was there because I did fashion design and it's been part of me. Like from the age of five, mm -hmm. it was noticed in me. Because I would just take papers, cut out stuff, and um, start putting them on my doll. And my mom knew absolutely nothing about sewing. And as I started going to school, especially uh, during uh, my late years in elementary school, first of all, my sister, my older sister, was into the fabric industry, and she was also sewing. So I saw all that, but naturally it was in me, right? Right. So when I got into high school and I had the opportunity to choose my subjects, I did arts and clothing and textiles was one of my main thing that I chose. I mean, I could have done that all the time. Mm -hmm. And sewing was a hobby and then it turned into a profession as well. Wow. So it's been a long time coming. I had a, a sewing room at home and I used to sew for a few friends. And then I got into painting, mm. painting clothing. So I started making um, uh, tops and bottoms as sets. And my neighbor had once had a, a house party for me and she invited friends and what have you. And this thing just blew. Wow. I was making things for people in Florida and things like that. And I got a little spot at the Crafters Marketplace. I yeah. don't know if you ever heard of that, but yeah. they had it in Ottawa also when I came here. You rent this little booth and you put your stuff in there. So that's when things started coming about, you know, it's possible for me to have my own um, business. Mm -hmm. And um, going back to working for Stitch It when I came here, again, is still in the fashion industry. Um, I worked, I started at Rideau Center uh, for three months and then I was transferred to Orleans being Orleans um, being my home area yes, yes. and right away I was made the manager of this the, the <laughs> business and I worked with them for seven eight years wow and like I said I branched out and opened the first Gifties Taylor and um, the partnership um, fell out mm -hmm. and um, so I left and then I worked from home for about two years okay and at home it was like you know when these wedding dresses started coming in and stuff it was i was working actually out of my dining room <laughs> and i used my washroom my, my powder room as, fitting as my room. fitting room <laughs> and when you enter the house like there's the 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 closet door was all mirror so right away i made a stand put it in front of it and <laughs> put my pegboards on the wall and put my thread and it was it was beautiful but it couldn't talk, I mean, it was not realistic. Yes, yes. And because we did other services as well, uh, we couldn't offer those services at home, like the dry cleaning and sure, stuff like sure. that, and the retailing and what have you. So one day I have um, Andre. Andre is such a blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been working together for quite a while. We were sitting at home one day working, and I'm like, Andre, you know, we really need to move. So he took the phone and started searching online. And it was Andre who actually found our old location mm -hmm. next to uh, Pantry Plus. Yes. 
Now, um, we signed a three-year lease, and after the three years, we signed another three years. Yes. And we knew by the fifth year that that spot was just Too going small. to kill our business mm -hmm. if we stayed there. And you know what? We had there were two options in this um, building, one on the main street at the side, and then this one in the lower part, which I wouldn't say is not completely basement, but it has like a basement kind mm -hmm. of look to it. Mm -hmm. When I entered this place, honestly, it was dark. It was like a cavey look or whatever mm -hmm. it is, but. I just felt something. Mm -hmm. I just felt that it had some character to it, and we could do something with sure. it. Sure. So. And you've done plan. something with it. <laughs> no, the place is amazing. Um, Thank you. Now, you you told us about the trials and tribulations. What's been the best thing about this the reopening of Gifties? First of all, I think working in a, a comfortable environment helps you in so many ways. Your thinking, um, the staff, it's just, there's no words to put to. You just feel good when you enter because everything has its place. Mm -hmm. It's organized, it's efficient. And all that I always had in my mind is not about having a big store. I just want something that works. Right. something that makes sense yes. you know and not to have because we have different services you don't want to just pile everything together and make it cluttered and then it looks like you don't know what you're doing mm -hmm. right um, and the customers love it they walk in here they feel good they feel good about leaving their clothes here and everything mm -hmm. and I think with the space it also gives me this feeling is that there's a lot of growth that could happen here mm -hmm. and um, no, absolutely yeah. Yeah. so you're an artist at heart you've always been an artist what what is it about what you do in creating something or even altering something to make a, that to make that person feel good about themselves again or you know putting on a new wedding dress or or just an alteration that brings that that article of clothing back to life the look on their faces and you know the smiles like what does that do for you um, what I'll tell you, Merrick, is that I have to be satisfied first mm -hmm. before my customers. And I think they feel that energy mm -hmm. because there is a lot of things that they don't see that I see. Mm -hmm. To them, it's OK. <laughs> right. Yeah. But until I have it perfect or at least to the best that it can be, um, we don't stop right there. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to alterations like especially with a custom design part right having just a lifeless piece of fabric mm -hmm. and creating something out of it and making it alive mm -hmm. is just beautiful mm -hmm. uh, being part of people's special one of the most special times in their lives which is the wedding mm -hmm. is such an honor for me and I'm sometimes so humbled by it you know by the appreciation and, and the trust and the trust you know um with the prom girls i mean gosh <laughs> those girls they sometimes annoy they are so in their perfect time of their life their bodies are so per they look like you know just god i'm telling you so like it's very satisfying you know um of course we have to make a living out of all this but i feel so blessed that I can actually do something that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. And I think you can relate to that, that when you do something that you enjoy, it does not even feel like work. You know, that stress, yes, we have all kinds of stress, the pressures of running a business, being an entrepreneur, but the actual work that is involved, the everyday work is just so satisfying. I don't know what words I can use to explain no, that. It's sometimes know. unexplainable. Exactly. I, I, I notice, like, I know who you are, but I don't think a lot of people know who you are. You're so faith-based. Like, your faith is what carries you through everything. There's blessed on your pillow here. Um, <laughs> there's a sign out there that says faith, 
without faith or with all things with all things yeah with faith with all things, things are possible so why like how do you incorporate that into your business um, without preaching to people like is it just something that is inside you that that drives you every day or is it something that you hang your hat on to re to, to kind of recalibrate after like a crazy day hmm. without faith Merrick nothing is possible at least that's what I know I don't know how others do it, mm -hmm. but that is what has carried me through my personal life and my business life. Mm -hmm. And my desire is that when customers with a presence that we have in this place, not anything magic, mm -hmm. but we are talking about faith now, yeah. that with faith and with that presence and that atmosphere that everybody that comes in here will also experience that naturally that when they leave here, they will feel that they've, you know, encountered More, yeah, that yes. as well. Yes. And to be honest with you, I have heard it mm -hmm. where people will tell me when they come in, they just feel this, it's they an, are comfortable. Yes, yes. And I know, and I'm not kidding anybody, I know it is the grace of God and the presence of the Lord. So through even our children, it's not all our children who have accepted the Lord, mm -hmm. but they watch every single move. Mm -hmm. Now, I do my best to go to church every Sunday, <laughs> but the Sundays that I don't go to church, my kids who do not go to church, all of them will ask me, how come? How can you go to church? <laughs> so the reason why I'm saying that is that people are watching, mm -hmm. you know. So it's not what you do in hiding or whatever. Sure. Everyday life mm -hmm. is what portrays your faith. And actually, actually. Where would <laughs> you want to see in, see Gifty the shop, not Gifty the person, Gifty the shop in three years? It's a big question. Yeah, I know. That's it's a, it's a big it's a big magazine. Okay. <laughs> well. Um, we've taken a big step right now mm -hmm. at a time when the world is still uncertain, but I stand on my faith. I also, because of my faith, I try not to live in fear, like mm -hmm. just what we were talking about, mm -hmm. and hopes that Gifty becomes well gra grounded mm -hmm. and a brand. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, I'm the face behind Gifties, but I don't want it to be about me, mm -hmm. right? Um, I hope that we'll be able to pick up our classes that we because we do have sewing classes as well. Wow. And I hope that we are able to start that again coming September next um, school mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. And um, that Giftie becomes like when people think of anything to do with their clothing pretty much mm -hmm. when you enter this place there's no reason why you should be going elsewhere mm -hmm. because we take care of your alterations if you want something made we custom design if you want your clothes cared for in dry cleaning restoration um uh, preservation mm -hmm. we do all that and um, we noticed that there's a lot of accessories mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. So that also came to mind, uh, which I added to the business um, as time went by, is that when people come with their, especially with their special dresses and stuff, they need to accessorize it. We women need a lot of accessories. <laughs> That's like the, the finishing touch of mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you again, Gifty, thank you. and it's a pleasure. Thank, thank you so much, Merrick. Ooh, really Canada Magazine. I wish <laughs> magazine would be out there for all of us to enjoy. Awesome. Yeah, thank you.